Right, so here we are at Suzuki's head office. We are looking in the area where they look after all the press fleet. You can look at the lovely shiny bikes that I'll be hopefully riding over the next few weeks. And uh, this man here is Richard O'Brien. Mate, lovely to meet you. Hi. Uh, you are the training coordinator of Suzuki and just general technical wizard, yes. I suppose. Yeah, I, I, I suppose, yes. Yeah, quality. And you, you've taken some time out on your Friday, probably wanting to get home and see your family and stuff. But to talk us through this lovely bike. Now, as I say, my first experience of a, of a Japanese 750 um, Luke was telling me when I was getting on it, I'd love it because I love the 600. Sure, sure. But find them because I'm 6'3", a little bit too small, and you know, I have to wind them up as much as so I love it, you know, and I love the thousands. But this is that almost well, perfect balance from the two, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, for, for, for me personally, um, the, the thousand is probably a little bit too much. The 600, you just never use it on the road, do you? 600, you have to keep keep playing with the gearbox all yeah. the time, but the, the, the 750, it's just it's, it's a happy, happy medium between the two, really. Yeah, totally. Um, with a bit more talk, um, you have to be. Uh, a, 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 you can be a little bit lazier on this bike. Yes, I'll it's, tell you what that... It's, it's the perfect bike for me, to be honest. It, it, I think, actually, I haven't read that today. It's, I've ridden it, like, properly today, and I've taken it out a few times, thing, but mainly today. I can see why, because, um, obviously, with the ECU mappings as well. Sure. You know, sure. but it, you can change it from, A, for full-on race mode, B, which is, you know, for normal, kind of, maybe, uh, road, kind of with a little bit of BHP off, isn't yes. it? And less yeah. snappy, and then, obviously, C for rain. But, um, but exactly what you're saying there, taking the, you know, the MV Augusta F4 out yesterday on the track, it was great, but I was doing 120 on the straight in second gear. You know, why are you going to use the six gears on the road? Um, same when I've had the Jukes of brilliant bike, but I, I don't think I did get out of second or third gear most of the time. Um, and I'm not one of those guys who likes to just whack it in top and roll it on. I like to actually feel like I'm riding right, it. Okay, okay. Um, but as you say, with this, much more torque, much punchier. You know, coming up through the revs, you don't have to wind it up and wait for it to kick no, in. No, no, and, and it's, it's still an exciting ride as yeah, well. Yeah, totally. I, I, I think for, for me the, the thousand is, um, as I say, probably too much for me now. I'm, yeah. I'm a much, much more realistic rider. Um, <laughs> well, you get the choice of bikes, so it's yeah, always yeah, nice to hear and, this with someone. Having, having come up with, um, I've, having sort of grown up through the 750s, um, yeah. I, I, I still own an 86 uh, Endurance. Really? So, yeah, oh, cool, man. Um, but, but these, these are, are very, very far removed. Obviously, the, um, the, the, the mode select switch, um, and you've ridden in snow just recently. Yeah, yeah, I have as well on this. In fact, you know what, the first time C I came C out of the car park, <laughs> I, do you know what the worst thing was? Came out of the Kerrang car park in C mode. Right. Uh, it was a bit, there was a bit of snow and sleet around, and um, it was the first sports bike of the year that I've really yes. been on. And I just gave it a little bit in second, and it was like, yeah, you yeah. know, so it's still lively, it's still there. Controllable. Exactly that, it didn't roll away from me, it was very easy to correct. And uh, yeah, you know, it, uh, it, it's great. But I mean, so what, what's like the core of this? Bike, obviously, straight away we start with the engine. I mean, with the engine, um, you're obviously looking at um, a um, almost like a semi stack um, gearbox unit, so the, the input and the output shafts are, are, are above each other. Okay, awesome. So that means that the, um, the, the, the mass of the engine is very, very central on the bike and it helps right. handling the bike. It does feel that way, I've got to say, yes. when you're flicking it around, it re I mean, I've, you know, a lot of these bikes all quite feel light and limber, but it just feels really well balanced, yes, you know. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and what, what we've done on this bike uh, um, is, is we've actually lengthened the swinging arm, okay. but kept the wheelbase um, pretty much the same. Right, okay, so... so the, the idea is that the, the swinging arm pivot now has yeah. moved much further forward um, on the frame, and we've, we, we can do that because of the stacked gearbox. Of course, yeah. Previously, the, the, the input and the output shafts were, were stacked behind each other, which made for a much longer engine. Right, gotcha. So the whole idea is to keep your mass as central as possible on the bike, and then it, it makes for a, a very, very much easier riding neutral handling bike. Yeah. yeah. And I was saying, what, what kind of uh, BHP does that kind of engine deliver, or HP? Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be around. It's going to be around the one fifty, one sixty, because it definitely yes, feels, yes, uh, yeah. you know, very, very peaky. Very, you know, so it's, it's got power all the way through, which I really like. Yes. And something I noticed as well: the exhaust, beautiful exhaust, sound it makes. Yes, gorgeous. Oh, hell, yes. Yeah. Not, not too bad around town. Not going to like wake your neighbours up if you just got it up. But once you actually once give it a little song, bit, yes. it's a really yes. throaty growl. It's always like, Rrr. yeah, that's cool. Now brakes wise, what have we got? We've got double disc back, haven't we? Single, single disc, sorry, of yeah. course you yeah. <laughs> The impressive to have a double one with the, with the chain on there. But. Yeah, it's a, it's a floating caliper, um, so single-sided piston on yep. it. Um, uh, obviously the pad and the whole caliper is pulled to one side as the, as the piston pushes on it. Okay. The whole idea behind that is to keep everything as lightweight as possible. You okay, don't cool. need two pistons on the back. Yeah. Um, you, you very rarely use the rear brakes. Um, True, actually, to be fair. Yeah. To be fair. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd use it when I'm, when I'm yeah. stopping. I think that's probably the only time. Um, front end, obviously, we've got um, the, uh, the four-pot calipers. Yep. Um, 
radio mounted um, calipers, um, so most of the force is transmitted directly back through the, yeah. the, the fork legs um, rather than um, putting a, a set of calipers in shear. But yeah. if, if you think about the the way we used to bolt the, the calipers on, yeah, yeah. Um, sideways like that. Yes. And obviously the force of the caliper puts those bolts in, in quite a lot of shear. So quite a lot of twist happen. action. Yeah, there would be so, torque yeah, going yeah, through it, wouldn't yeah. it? So, yeah, yeah. Um, on this particular model we've gone for, um, I, I think we've gone for much more um, floating um, collets. Mm. Um, once again, it, it's, it's all designed to keep your your front braking system as balanced as possible. Yeah. Um, what you'll see on a lot of the bikes, and not on this one, um, but you'll see that the brake lines are sometimes made of different materials. Yes. So quite often you'll see a Kevlar line going across yep. the front there. Yep. Um, if you go Kevlar lines on them all, it makes you, your front brakes far too stiff, far too harsh. Okay, cool. Um, so looking at the, the um, brake lines on this, it, it, gives, it gives a very, very progressive Progressive so it's braking, yeah. I've, I've, I've had a couple of times where I had to kind of grab hold of it around the roundabouts around Milton Keynes, yeah. and it's really nice because it doesn't just, you know, slam on too You'll hard. You'll never be in need of brakes on this. And that's um, true, actually, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's just a, it's a really well-balanced package, to be honest. It has, it pretty much. Now, I mean, suspension-wise, obviously, uh, adjustable, isn't it? So if it you is, want to take yes. on a track day, yeah. Yeah. you and can do it. High and low speed um, settings on the, the front suspension, um, and obviously the, the low speed damping, will take into account the yep. very, very small undulations in the road. High speed damping, if you hit a big bump, yep. what, you, what you don't want is too much damping at that stage. You yes. want everything to move very, very quickly and be very, very reactive. Yes, so, sort of taut almost, yeah. yeah. Otherwise it would just be, you'd be bouncing for ages. Yes. <laughs> and that would be horrible. Wicked, and just quickly, price-wise, What's this? So this is the K9, isn't it? You've got the new, you've got the anniversary one out this year, haven't you? There's an anniversary edition, yeah. That's that's. Uh, there's only 25 units those being. Yeah, so everyone gets them. They've got a little plaque on and everything, exactly, haven't they? Exactly. I want one of those. <laughs> yeah, they're quite special. There's exhaust, uh, different exhaust on and different plaque. Cool. And a special paint job which goes back to 19 of June. It's actually it's a it's a tribute to uh, one of the previous paint schemes. I think yeah. Red, so, uh, okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Awesome, and uh, what's what's the K9 one retailing at? About, you know? At about eight, just just over eight. Basically. It's not bad, is it? When you think that you know you're looking at your thousands at the eleven, twelve thousand price Absolutely, mark, yeah. you're getting a bike that isn't far off that kind of oh, power no, and that thing for for almost three thousand pounds yes. less. Brilliant. Well, my verdict is I absolutely love this bike. Um, I wish I could have a bit more time in it, but hey, that's that's my fault for losing my padlock keys in the snow. And up next, I'm on the 650 Bandit, aren't I? That's right. Wicked, which will be a, a kind of love, some more subdued ride back, but probably a little bit more comfortable, should I mean, a little bit of thing. But uh, Richard, absolute pleasure meeting yep. you. I'm sure we'll be pleasure doing many more well, of these yeah. uh, over the next few weeks. Luke, as always, real pleasure. Uh, we'll be getting on the uh, Bandit in a second. That's